Well, the rain's kind of died down a little bit. This is where I stash my fuel. These two trees are down here. You've got to hide it pretty good. There's other people who can use this trail, so it's back in there. I've got uh, 15 gallons, three five-gallon tanks. Now you can see the trail is pretty tame here. But boy, once you get over that rise and uh, hit the rocks, it's uh, pretty rugged, beautiful. And lots of people come out this far and they'll go to the river and that's about as far as they go. It's about another, oh, maybe 12 miles from here. I'm not sure if you can see that, but that's a fresh crop of stinging nettle. I already picked up quite a bit and I'll just leave the rest of this grow till next year and I'll put it in my tea. Now any of this stuff, don't use it if you don't know what it is, but this stuff is amazingly healthy. And I brought the little saw this time because I'm going to have a lot of weight going down the mountain with the trailer on. And so I'm pretty uh, conscientious and I'll just have enough fuel to make it back. Just starting my day here and I'm always foraging when I'm out because camp is right there. And look at these healthy fungi. Wow. I had to run back and get the camera. I'm just starting my day. But I'm always foraging out there now these are amazing when they grow this time of year they are so healthy again don't uh, don't eat or pick any fungi that you don't know what it is well I got a late start today I got in late last night the camp perfect only took a minute but it's all set up here I just lit a fire and and uh, nice and warm had a great night just gonna head out here and start my day. Okay, I wanted to show you something too. This is X-Lax. It's not for me. It keeps the mice away. The mice will eat a little bit. Now that's just those little chocolate cubes, X-Lax that you buy. And it just, uh, they'll bite it and eat it and it'll give them a tummy ache and they'll just leave. They won't touch anything. Just gonna grab my Knapsack, you guys have seen this before. A little, I just tied on my uh, my uh, bag for my crossbow and it holds a pile of stuff. And I've got different things in here like gauze and a few other things. I think I've showed you about that. But camp turned out, uh, you know, I set it up in the middle of the night uh, when I got up here last time. And you know, it's not a bad job. I mean, the uh, the canopy's a little ragged, but it's not bad at all. See where I got a little stuck coming in. But yeah, it's all set up. Very comfortable night last night. I had a good day yesterday coming in, and I want to show you something. I'm pretty fussy on the wood I get, and I pack it really nice so that it uh, has a good ride home. And I found quite a few moose sheds. On my way in, I stopped at the high plateau, and uh, I'll show you something. Can you imagine the power it took to break that paddle off? Now, I can use that paddle, and I'll just make that head into an eagle, and it'll uh, look really good. Yeah, I'm getting a late start here, but I brought the little stall in. I'm going to be really weight conscious pulling this trailer behind... Uh, Behind main camp is going to be a lot of weight going down. And I only got those tires for brakes. Anyway, I'll keep you informed how I make out. Well, I got in, uh, it was too dark last night to fill them, but found a few yesterday. But I got some cool thing to show you. Look at how that antler's cracked. It's neat. And I found this little set right together, almost just like that. But look how dark they are. Now, it's not a very big set, but it's just so dark. So I'm going out again today. Wish me luck. I'm trying to find uh, matches to those big sets or big antlers I have. And uh, we'll see you later. Well, I've had a wonderful trip, but I got to get off the mountain. It's really hot, so I'm breaking camp, heading out, and... Uh, if that snow cap starts to melt, I'll never get through those creeks. Especially, I'm already getting stuck here and there and everywhere. 
but I'll just show you some of the highlights when I get home I'll show you all the different found the uh, found the triple brow tine buck the other side pretty cool he's got velvet still on both antlers I have also found that little guy but you wouldn't even get excited over because it's got a broken G2 but I found the, the set which is a really really cool deer and a lot actually did pretty good considering I've already picked this area I only picked browns I've uh, fueled everything up I'm I'm gonna go uh, home hopefully light enough to get off the mountain and I'll see you when I get home what a what a beautiful trip I had anyway the next time you see me I'll be at home well there's where I was camped and I'm all loaded ready to go I like camping in willows because if you camp in the big timber there's a chance a big tree will fall on you or and with willows you can just kind of tramp them down and uh, one of the best trips I've ever had uh, no grizzlies up here the grizzlies are on to this time of year they go down to the stock lakes and look for fish that have winter killed so I didn't have to carry my shotgun so I was making some pretty good time everything's loaded I found some really really cool sheds when I get home I'll show you and uh, gonna be an interesting ride down but it's really warm so the trail will be nice and dry wish me luck well I got home late last night it's kind of drizzling you can see where it's still raining went in and charged this battery up it's like that held really really good yeah the great trip actually rested a little bit on the way home uh, uneventful had a Seen, seen a moose I'll show you that later in the uh, video and I'm gonna go in and have a coffee and it's just to charge this thing I don't know if it's video or not but anyway I will show you what I found okay I just got back late last night from Jurassic Park the nickname I gave to Grizzly Bear Gorge and I'm going to set up the uh, quad tent right by the tent shed because I have little friends that want to spend the weekend in it. So I'm going to video just how fast it sets up. Just bear with me. I'll, right now I'll take the tarp off and then I'll show you how the wings sit. Okay, the tarp's off and I'll show you how I hold the wings up just with a strap there. And I'll show you how they fold down looks like we might get rain here so I'll hurry up so these are how the wings go down the, the supports are just on hinges and tarp straps and when you grab this and you fold it down you can see just folds like that and this is the other side you just grab it drop it down and it folds and next you just pull the tarp out and it just pulls down and hangs down too. Well I don't know if it's light enough in here to can see this video but after you let the wings down you just uh, crawl inside and you put the far poles in first to so just uh, friction fit into the uh, poles and they've actually got holes in the plywood that they fit in so you put those two in then you put these two in and then those cross members are kind of like a yoke and you just slide them in and it stretches that pole out and then you just put these poles in okay and the same thing you stretch that one out and it puts pressure on the roof and then now I'll go outside and put the jacks on and uh, put the pegs in and then I'll put the stove in. The jacks and everything are in this bag, the pegs, and there's where the jacks go in. I got uh, one on the other side in already. And then you just come to the front and it has
has to be raining out. And then you just adjust it with this jack here. And you can feel when it gets really resistant, then you know it's good pressure. And I know the, the little ones are going to be wrestling on this thing here, so I make, better make sure it's good and level. There it is. Again, all the pegs are in there. I've got an axe that I'll pound it in, and it's also got a little thing there to pull them out when they get stuck. So I'll, I'll go ahead and peg it and shut this off. It's raining now, so... Well, I was going to try video the whole thing, but it was raining and snowing, so I had to set up camp, but I'll show you what it looks like. I don't think that many of you have seen it. This is basically how we're set up when we used to do stay for weeks when we were up uh, hunting. And now, of course, I don't hunt anymore, but it was very comfortable when I was shed hunting. And I got to set it up because the kids are coming for the weekend. My little buddy's bringing some couple of buddies of his. But this is what it looks like. Oh, there's where the fire pit's going to be. You can see this roughly what it looks like. And that's exactly how we're set up years and years. For years we set up like this. And we would just call right behind that mess. We very seldom go out of camp. We wouldn't have to, we were very comfortable in there. In fact, one year we even had satellite TV. You can see what it looks like. And uh, show you inside here. Basically, this is how we were set up. There was three of us. Now there's just me left, but this is roughly how we set up. My little buddy's gonna have fun with his two buds. There'll be three of them, so they'll need the three chairs and of course they want all the authentic stuff so this is what we always use antler handles and it's all electricity uh, we're not going to have any propane I don't have any trouble and they'll bring their own food and water and uh, Dukey really likes it hey Duke yeah now inside here okay this is exactly how we were always set up. There's the uh, stove there. Now I can run propane or wood. We used to always run propane, so we were really quiet. There was the sleeping quarters. That's uh, my side that I would sleep on so I could tend to the uh, stove and turn on the light. And there's the other side. Of course the ladder. And uh, it was always comfortable. There was always, uh, Ernst always had his cot here. Oh, that's uh, too bad. Anyway, so this is what it would look like. We would be in here either sleeping or, and we would call right from here. And now this is just my backyard, but you can see they couldn't see us in here. We didn't have to, we were very, very comfortable. We used, uh, I had one of those Eco 3000 power plants, so totally quiet. And we could make our coffee and have everything in the morning. And so I don't think you guys have ever seen this, so I thought I would show you before I show you all the antlers, shit antlers that I found. So this is what it looks like when it's set up. They're going to be here for at least, uh, he thinks every weekend he can in the summer, they're going to have some fun. I'll tell you. So basically, that's what it looked like. If we're in the big timber, we always tie the lines high so you don't clothesline yourself. And very, very comfortable. I think the, the longest we've ever spent in this camp was 18 days. And totally comfortable. And uh, it sets up fast. And so I wanted to show you that. So I also wanted to show you this. This is the receiver that sits in the front of the 450 and it's either pushing you up a mountain or breaking now when I pull that trailer this normally would go in that trailer receiver and the length of rope and whoever was behind would either be uh,
braking or pushing. Now I came this last trip and I didn't have any of that. And I'll tell you, she was quite a rodeo. But I didn't take the chains. That's really, really heavy. I didn't take any of the extra winches this round. I didn't take any of the uh, cables or nothing. This is full of tarp straps. You've seen all them were on the trailer. You need a lot. There's the big screen TV that you've seen uh, ice fishing on my videos. I've also got a satellite finder and a receiver if we want to watch satellite TV. I mean, that's glamping. Okay, 2024 Shed Antler review. Okay, uh, let's start with uh, my first trip. I found this big shed, which we all guessed on the sea tags. Thank you for guessing. Then I, I know it's a set, and then this uh, this is the actual one I was looking for it, This for the last trips. I want to hopefully get the match for it. This is the one we're guessing this month for the sea tags. And you all know that I found the triple brow tine buck. Well, this trip I found the match. The match, the first one I found was on a uh, plateau. This one was in a really heavy timber. You can see the difference in color. It never faded very much. Now the uh, double uh, drop tine buck. I originally found that shed and found his other shed, which you've seen the video of. I think one of the highlights of the trip was, or the trips was the, uh, this moose. I've never seen one that dark. Amazing. There's a pile of odds and ends. But I want to show you this one, found this little set. But just look at how much he grew last year. That was two years ago and this was his last year's shed. Okay, a few more smaller sets. These are kind of cool. Found the set and then found, I uh, didn't find the match to this year's, but you can see that's this year's. Another uh, mule deer there. This is a cool uh, find. I found the... Uh, older shed of of this mule deer and that's a beautiful deer um, then of course these whitetail sheds are amazing amazing very fine fine i'll try to get out of the shadow here look at how light i mean fine he's not got that much mass but just points seven by seven now his back point was kind of weird because it it did one of these but i found the shed and you can see he broke that uh, that back G2 off, and uh, it seemed to carry forward on his next year's uh, rack. Um, the other thing this I showed you before, this must have been giving that poor moose a headache. Look, I wonder the, the force it took to smash that one off. Um, there's also, I think I showed you this before, a crack. Just a... So many neat antlers. Uh, trip on them here. Okay, uh, another one to highlight was this little guy here. Look how dark that set is. Hey, Duke. Yeah, Duke's looking at it. And uh, just, you know, in a heavy, this is a heavy, heavy deer. You know, and look how dark compared to this is another set I found, but you can see how light they are. There's some good genetics in that one there. Another set. So that's more or less the uh, highlights of 2024 shed hunting. Of course, the highlight will be the uh, the triple brow tine buck. What an amazing, amazing animal. Now, I wanted to show you, too, on this. He's still got velvet. I don't know if you can see that. Hang on. He's still got velvet, and you can really see it here. I just wanted to pull a little bit off there just to show you. You know, he uh, he hadn't even stripped his, all his velvet off. So that, this other side had to be just as dark, you know, when he was on the hoof. Can you imagine seeing that rascal? What a beautiful animal. So the highlights to me is finding the double drop tine buck you know having six years ago and then having now 
I'm really hoping to get next year's you know because can you imagine we I know that animals alive we know that animals alive we know that animals alive so it's gonna be a really really fun year next year and besides that this one's gonna be cool to see too now I have another set of of sheds that's a 7x7 seven seven. it's heavier than that that I found in that same area a long time ago so it must be the same genetics anyway it's gonna be a long video so thank you very much for watching any questions just let me know and please donate to cancer we'll see you in the next video